Castaneda had hoped just to observe and take notes. But Don Juan explained that to understand shamanism fully, he must take peyote himself. It was a moment of acute indecision and fear. I felt almost unable to control myself. My hands were wet and my stomach contracted. I mean, here's Carlos. He wouldn't touch beer, for example. He wouldn't touch it then and he wouldn't touch it later when I, when I saw him later. Uh, and I, I just, he's just not a fellow who seems to be interested in drugs or, or anything like that. He was afraid those hallucinogens are not something that he had done prior in his life. So he was scared out of his mind. Don Juan urged me to chew it. The conversation became very lively. The men were talking in Italian and repeated over and over one phrase about the stupidity of sharks. I thought it was a logical, coherent topic. Every memory came back to me at once, and suddenly all was clear in my mind. I raised my head and saw a black dog approaching. The dog became iridescent. An intense light radiated from its body. Interpreting Castaneda's vision the next day, Don Juan explained that the dog he had seen was in fact the spirit of the peyote plant. The spirit had never appeared to a western man in this way before. Don Juan saw it as an omen that Castaneda had been chosen to become his apprentice. Castaneda accepted the challenge and in doing so, he took anthropological research to a whole new extreme. Castaneda went native. He went and apprenticed himself to a religious practitioner and followed relatively exclusively the training under that single individual. Most anthropologists don't take that in-depth approach to studying one very narrow aspect of the culture. Carlos Castaneda, in a sense, created an academic transgression by breaking the boundaries between the observer and the participant. In social science, you are not supposed to do that. You are supposed to simply observe, be a witness, write about something, and then leave. Castaneda dedicated the next four years of his life to his apprenticeship with Don Juan. But his personal life suffered as a result. He told me that he had met a man that was a sorcerer, Don Juan, and he, and he said that he was going to spend a lot of time with him. And uh, he left me when he came back. And he, he just wasn't the same uh, that he, he had been before. He sacrificed having a normal life with my mother. And he said it was the saddest day of his life. But my father had an unbending intent, and his intent was to, at the time, to get what he needed for his thesis. And then it evolved into, into much more. One of the shaman's greatest skills was divination. The ability to foretell the future and reveal secrets hidden in the past. The plant used for divination was jimson weed, 
its seeds could be crushed and made into a potion. Like peyote, jimson weed was thought to contain a powerful spirit. Jimson weed is a very powerful substance, very dangerous. It produces deaths every year in the United States. Like the hallucinogens, it can produce visionary experiences, but it can also have a lot of toxic effects on the body. Castaneda claimed that in his trance, he saw that a close friend was on the verge of mental collapse. Another vision helped him to identify the person responsible for a series of crimes at his university. After this vision, this person was caught at the UCLA library and sentenced to prison and made to pay an enormous fine for having done this. In the course of his apprenticeship, Castaneda became more and more versed in the effects of the plants used in shamanic rituals. The plants were basically designed to break down his defenses, break down his worldview, sort of stop his descriptions of reality in order to allow him to perceive the world in a different way. Under the influence of hallucinogenic mushrooms, Castaneda even came to believe he could fly. The momentum carried me forward, and from there I soared. I saw the dark mass of the mountains. My speed was extraordinary. I enjoyed such freedom and swiftness as I had never known before. He said he turned into a crow one time. <laughs> Did you read that? And I never see a, a crow fly over that I don't talk to it and call it Carlos. Nineteen sixty five marked a turning point for Castaneda. He began to see visions and spirits without the use of hallucinogens, and accepted Don Juan's explanation that these were glimpses of other realities that existed alongside our own. For the first time, he truly saw the world through Native American eyes. But the four-year apprenticeship was beginning to take its toll. Castaneda became increasingly disorientated as the line between one reality and another became blurred. He began to fear he was losing his reason. He's terrified. He's absolutely terrified. He's so devastated and so shaken by this that he knows that is the end of the four to five year apprenticeship that he describes. In